Welcome back to another issue of Bingo Topics where we're going to look at a myriad of things connected with the Philadelphia Eagles, starting here with some trends we saw from the draft and ending with where they see these Eagles ranking, although for me, it's not going to be quite so high. What's up, it's your boy Centron, and come back at you with another analysis video that keeps you not, that's my real name, Eagles Blitz with Tommy Lawyer, a great website that dives into more like stats and uh, numbers, but you know, also shows some uh, things, themes connected with the Philadelphia Eagles that are not so easily to piece together. So give them a shout out because they deserve it. Anyways, um, Sunday Notebook draft trends. Some things that you noticed that were uh, thematic when you piece together the evidence. All right, let's dive into it. First, Red Star players. So what are Red Star players? They're players that the Eagles identified that um, have a combination of football talent and the kind of character we're looking for. And we were looking for, uh, you know, not Boy Scouts, but guys that have an edge this off season. And, um, you know, we found a, a quite a bit of them. And these are believed to be the five guys because some of them were mentioned and some of them weren't. But um, all the softy, no pizza having motherfuckers. Anyways, Trevor Keegan, Jeremiah Trotter Jr., Will Shipley were the guys mentioned. But we believe that Quinion Mitchell and Cooper DeGene were also those guys. So, um, you know, there's some doubt of the level of talent, some of those guys, but you can't bring the question that they they are talented individuals at least um they had sterling uh college careers and uh you will see what they do with the pros but um let's see like i never would have imagined this but will shipley was seen as an alpha and natural leader by his coaches and uh nfl scott says he'll light a fire under the, the butt of his guys he leaves it all out there and expects the same from his teammates so you want a guy like that who's self-accountable um is going to be a leader by way of action, um, not just empty words, but is going to expect the best out of his uh, teammates as well, demand that of them. So um, happy to see we you know we added a guy like that to the mix. Um, let's see, Andre Dillard didn't have that, and you know he was soft. They, they did Zoom meetings with him. You know it was a mistake not bringing him into the building, kind of getting a you know um, air to air conversation with him to. Yeah, suss him out in person you know we believe that we would have been able to uh kind of uh, filter out you know guys like that but you know alas they drafted him and didn't work out you know he had the talent but you know the personality traits the edge edginess wasn't there so um cooper de Jean and you know mitchell they both were under drafted you know cooper fell to the second round and he believes that uh he should have gone in the first. I mean, we had him, I think, Tad is a first-round guy. First-round talent for sure. Um, and Quinion Mitchell, you know, he could have accepted NIL deals to go elsewhere, but he decided to stay with Toledo, the, the, the squad that brought him in to college football and had his back throughout his, you know, issues with uh, qualifying as far as academically. So he decided to stick with them, and it, it, it paid off. And, um, you know, he also believes that he fell to 22, yeah, he, he wants to uh, prove that he should have been a top 10 talent. Um, playmaking guys. So I didn't even think about this, but Jeremiah Trotter had some pick sixes as well. Two, um, I think, maybe three, but multiple for Cooper DeGene, Quinion Mitchell, and uh, Trot Jr. So um, they made plays, man. Uh, tackles uh, for loss, sacks, interceptions, uh, scores. I mean, yeah, we had definitely last year dropped interceptions. I mean, Remember countless time, times our linebackers dropping balls. I'm like, if we only had a play, if we only had a playmaking um, backer there, Devin White. I think he definitely brings that. You know, and he also has an edginess to him. And um, Nicole B. Dean, he, he looked to uh, get a handle on the run game. So I'm, I'm excited to see him back healthy to see what he can do on that uh, healthy uh, foot. Versatility. I mean, all these guys. Cooper DeGene, he can play corner, safety, or in the slot. Mitchell can play inside or outside. Um, Will Shipley can run, block, catch, re return kicks. Cooper can also uh, return punts. Um, Dylan McMahon, inside, you know, he had played all the inside tier positions. Keegan uh, started at uh, tackle as well. So, I mean, like, just that's the theme. Anaya Smith um, can be a gadget guy, can be a kick return special teams guy. Um, yeah, I mean, just Johnny Wilson, as I mean, big as he is, he can play on the inside or on the, on the outside. Um, just the, the name of the game, the more things you can do, the more you can help your team. And also the more difficult you can be to defend or to game plan. 
in athletes, yeah, just the RAS scores, you know, <laughs> not Reeves, but RAS. They're trying to you know, RAS and dazzle these, uh, you know, NFL scouts, but they were pretty high for, you know, guys like Dylan McMahon. He uh, had like a 90 over, 98 overall athletic score comparable, comparable to Jason Kelsey. Uh, Trevor Keegan is not that, but, you know, he's a very solid guy. Quinion is also obviously an athlete, as is Cooper Jean, um, Anaya Smith. I mean, so that was also, you know, something we want to get in. You know, we have had limited guys, um, not quite at receiver, but um, I would say uh, more at the you know, other skill positions. Um, DB, the guys, I mean, like outside of Slay, whose you know, tools are diminishing in his finish, physical uh, skills. James Bradbury, you know, he kind of is what he is, you know. Um, Eli Ricks, who are talented, um, you know, he, he got shook out of shoes last year. So, I mean, we needed to upgrade safety. We look a bit, look, looked a little bit stiff and slow and old. So, um, bringing in these guys, man, I, I'm happy to see that we, we prioritize that. And I think we were, yeah, they said we're number two in, in prioritizing the uh, the uh, RAS score. So, hey, man, um, definitely want to make sure we have guys that, um, you know, that, that are not getting outclassed out there. Um, unusual. Yeah, Jalex Hunt, definitely. Wide receiver DB. And then, you know, switches to linebacker who does that. But his frame, he kept getting bigger. Came in at six foot. And then, you know, eventually he left. He was like six foot three, almost six foot four. Um, and put on about 50 pounds, necessitating a move to uh, the middle of the defense instead of being on the uh, the last uh, line of defense. Um, Dylan McMahon, I mean, yeah, he just, he's undersized. But, you know, he's taking it as inspiration. He, you know, saw Jason Kelsey as a guy he looked up to, you know, his, his, you know, his personal heroes, like, you know, someone that made him believe that he could play at his size. And then returners, yeah, um, we lost Boston Scott, but uh, getting Shipley, getting um, Anaya Smith, getting um, Cooper DeGene, guys that can return. Let's see, we have a backup player in case Cubby, you know, let's just say he gets hurt, something like that. So um, it's just some interesting, you know, bits and bobs, pieces to uh, pick up on. All right, now next thing we're going to get into the Eagles' biggest winners and losers, losers from the 2024 NFL Draft. So, um, you know, somebody's got to win, somebody's got to lose. You know, we got nine freshmen coming in to our program, and uh, that means other guys are going to uh, either, you know, be released or um, they're not going to make the roster uh, going into tra coming out of training camp um, traded, Potentially, or just you know, not going to be re-signed because, you know, the new talent coming in. Younger, fresher, cheaper. That's the name of the game. All right, winner, Vic Fangio. You definitely, uh, when you get him a <laughs> Quinion Mitchell, Cooper DeGene, a guy like, and we won't see the field most likely this year, Jalex Hunt. You know, Edge Rusher, can feel, he feels comfortable in space. Um, you you give him a lot of tools to work with. Um, and, and it just, you know, I thought they would, you know, kind of pay credence to him a little bit. Okay, we'll give you this or that, you know, some paltry upgrades. No, really, High Roseman this, this offseason went all in, and he made damn sure that we weren't la lacking in the cover part department as far as talent goes. All right, loser, Kenneth Gainwell. I mean, yeah, um, I automatically took an L with Saquon sign, but with um, Will Shipley coming in, I believe it's just, you know, the, the, the writing is on, on the wall that, hey, Probably not gonna need that that second contract from us, but uh, you know, do your best and you'll be playing for somebody. But most likely not here in Philly. Kellen Moore definitely, um, Anaya Smith, uh, Johnny Wilson, Chipley. I definitely give with that. You know, two athletic O linemen who are you know getting give depth. But he won even before the the draft began because he got you know Saquon you got to work with the offensive line that we have got to work with AJ Brown and uh, Devonta Smith, Dallas Goddard. You know, so. Um, and then, you know, the tools that you know, he's going to have, you know, a tight end. You know, we're like four deep right now. Um, you know, if he can make something out of uh, all that potential that the, the former Denver t uh, tight end, Albert O, has, I mean, we've really got something there, you know, as far as, like, just the depth and the breadth of, you know, talent we have. Tyler Singh ain't losing. So people say this, you know, yeah, he's got a guy um, coming in, Trevor Keegan, that could be hot on his heels, a national championship winner. This past season, and you know, guy who made thirty plus starts um, in college at guard, but 
Steam's gonna be getting the first crack. And who do we see win, despite Steam being the competition last year at guard, though being a natural center, Cam Jurgens. So that year of experience makes all the difference. And you know, he's had you know time to learn the playbook, get stronger, um, get more comfortable at guard. Where he was a tackle at Alabama and Vanderbilt. So um, I like him to win the battle. If he really struggles, Trevor could usurp him. Uh, you, could, you know, even though he's a rookie, he's a smart guy, you know, has uh, plenty of starting experience. We shall see. But I have this going on in Steen's advantage. Nicole Dean. Sure, people saying that, but Josh Hunt, he's 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 an edge guy. Nolan Smith, edge guy. Trotter, yeah, he fell, but he's a rookie coming in, and this is Dean's third year, and he's going into it. You know, in training camp, he'll he'll be taking the snaps. So, um, same as last year, kind of green dot. They were kind of dependent on him to take that helm, and I think he'll do it. And you know, barring him staying healthy, I don't see um, Trotter overtaking him. That being said. Don't underestimate the young man. You know, the intelligence that he has, the toolage he's had, like with, you know, Trot Sr. Uh, being in his ear and uh, being the angel on his shoulder to give him all the advice in the world. Sure, but don't see it happening. Michael Clay, definitely. <laughs> the upgrades he's got on uh, special teams, like a guy like Cooper DeGene, um, Anaya Smith, the returners, um, Jalex Hunt, you know, if he plays early, his role will be through special teams. All of that. As, as Air Rogers, yeah, it should be. I mean, I forgot about him, Kip Turner. I want to see him at Kip Turner. That 427 speed, let's put that to good use. Um, so definitely. Keely Ringo, Ring, uh, Eli Ricks, it was going to happen by nature. I mean, if you wanted to um, keep us from drafting these guys, you could show out last year, and they didn't. Um, I'll bet you both were rookies, and you know they didn't trust you, didn't see the field early, but I don't think you were ready as well. Eli showed he could play early, but you know we really screwed him over. Pigeonhole him um, in kind of an emergency. I had no other choice but to put him inside, see what he was working with, and you know he wasn't up to the task. And has he gotten better in the slot? Don't know, but I, I think he's an outside corner. Um, he's a depth guy now, as is Keeley, and we'll see what they bring to the table. Have they gotten better? But hey, man, it's a year-to-year -year league, and we can't sit and wait for you to you know maybe get better. You know, like oh, we have those guys in the building, so we're not gonna go. No, go ahead and get Quinn Young. Go ahead and get um, Cooper. And they're sitting right there, you know, for the taking. So I'm glad we brought those guys in. And I feel really comfortable with our depth this year as opposed to last year where those guys were in a position where they shouldn't have been starting. I feel good about where they are now, where they should be, at least as, as far as their, their uh, current development shows. They're right where they need to be on the depth chart. Third, fourth, fifth, somewhere in that range. All right, Jordan Davis, definitely, you know, we didn't draft a guy, but... We all, I mean, he, he invested, you know, number 14th overall pick in him. We weren't going to give up on him. Um, might not give, give, even give up on him if we don't, um, even if we don't offer him a fifth-year tender. We still invested a first-round pick in you, and we're not so readily uh, willing to depart from those guys. And you shouldn't be. It's an investment. He's a rare talent, you know, six foot six guy, 340, who runs a 4.7. You know, that size, that's just, that's, you know, 1% rare. So... Um, happy to have him and Milton Williams and Marlon and Moro, PJ Mustard River, he makes it, you know, it's already cut. And uh, of course, Jalen Car Carter starting to cross from him. So I I'm, I'm hope that he's able to take, take a huge step forward this offseason, but you know, it'll be what he puts in. But anyways, um, let's get to the last thing today, the power rankings on uh, where do the Eagles stand? So I'm just gonna cheat here, do this, and go right to where we uh, should be, going to the Eagles. All right, I, have, I mean, at number 11, I think this is a perfect position for us to be in because we're, stop going back. We're the challenger. And um, as great as we had, you know, off season we had bringing in guys, um, bringing in running back talent, bringing in secondary talent, we the draft as well. <coughs> there is no erasing that awful, God awful stench that we stunk up the joint with losing six out of our last seven. Um, getting destroyed in a playoff game down in Tampa, 32 to nine. I think, do we even score a touchdown? I mean, just insane, um, the level to which we sunk to um, in each and every week, getting worse and worse and uh, playing worse and worse. But, you know, it's indicative of the, you know, talent we had, the coaching positions, the coordinator positions, and, you know, 
the head coach not being able to take advantage of uh, the things that they should have been able to do. You know, it was just, even just a baseline of, of a modicum of success, seeing the you know amount that we had in 2022. But you know, a lot of things failed, and you know, I don't think there will be a repeat this season because we just have too much talent. We brought to the building fresh new blood that had had nothing to do with that collapse last year, and, and that's eager and willing to prove themselves this year. And, um, you know, also upgrading those coordinator spots, going with veterans and um, Vic Vangio on defense and Kellen Moore on offense. You know, are people, some people doubt. I've seen some videos, you know, saying, oh, Kellen Moore's offense, is, it's a fraud. It's Look, he's never had the amount of talent he's had to work with here in Philly. And, you know, I think it's going to be a fusion of some sorts of, you know, RP offense, what we do. And, um the offense we've seen up, up until now with him, uh, the kind of Eric Coriel West Coast offense um, of, you know, the Chargers and the Cowboys that he's, he's filled it. I think it'll be the best of both worlds. We'll meld that. We'll use the modicum of the RPOs um, and then we'll f focus on his quick hitting um, quarterback friendly scheme that, you know, really makes it him, the quarterback, you know, truly a point guard, allows him just to distribute and you know easy layups all throughout uh, the game all throughout the, the game plan so i think he'll be highly successful at it and um you know nick will be up there for veto power be like, like let's do this all right let's do this in this situation he'll be, a, be a, sorry he'll be able to be a ceo and just you know run that part of the ship and um the coordinators will focus on you know their main job putting us in positions to be successful and Nick will be able to give us that final push to like, you know, veto power, like I said, yay or nay. But anyways, um, I mean, yeah, like I said, the, the Rams, the Cow, okay, the Chaos behind the Cowboys, so I mean, I think that's indicative of their, their season, the Cleveland Browns, the Pittsburgh Steelers, so I, for me, that's in perfect territory because, um, I mean, I would say the Rams, I would say we were above them, but the Green Bay Packers should be above us, the Bengals should be um, because they have their main piece coming back. The Dolphins should be, the Bills should be, and like in the Ravens, you get into the upper echelon of teams here. So um, we're squarely right where we need to be. Challenger, no dodge. Anyways, see what I did there? Wordplay, farce. But hey, we're gonna get up out of here. But you're not even watching nobody. It's all good because I love making these videos and I love talking about stinking Philadelphia freaking Eagles. So like I said, officially, we'll chunk the deuces. But as always, as always, it's Fly Eagles Fly and let's motherfucking go! Thanks for watching. Check me out at Cintron, Cintron Anime, Cintron Life, or Cintron Laughs, or other social media.